the mother of an evil Paris suicide or bomber whose two brothers are also suspects has said her son did not mean to kill anyone and he believes he blew himself up, up because of stress well, that's certainly a understanding mother Russia to join West to beat ISIS Putin tells Cameron it's time we work together Vladimir Putin signaled he is prepared to join the West to obliterate ISIS during crunch talks with David Cameron at the G20 summit that's good news and from breaking Israel news Italian daily sued for post Paris bombings headline Muslim bastards like a muddied spring or polluted fountain is a righteous man who gives way before the wicked Proverbs 25 verse 26 well there you go I thought this article was interesting from listen now wanted grown-ups 17 hours ago on the day ISIS related terrorists spread out across Paris and killed more than 100 people Barack Obama claimed ISIS was contained after the attacks liberals actually tried to argue that the attacks in Paris showed how successful Barack Obama has been because ISIS was having to lash out to get attention yes liberals actually argued this <laughs> wanted real grown-ups please Paris terror attacks, France could invoke NATO collective defense clause. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg addresses a news conference during a defense minister's meeting at headquarters in Brussels October 8, 2015. After terror attacks in Paris on Friday, security experts said France could invoke NATO's Article 5 defense clause. And the next bit of news, Pope talks end times terror in Paris now this is I find interesting too. Pope Francis struck a somber note with his most recent message to pilgrims at st. Peter's Square telling the 10,000 or so gathered to consider their lives are coming face to face with God and the state of the world particularly in light of the Paris terrorist attacks uh, no what he's trying to tell you is he is the vicar of Christ which they have claimed for so thousands of years now uh, so he is the god of this world and so he's trying to say you're coming face to face with god which is actually him or he is the false prophet basically who's going to usher in the antichrist and he's trying to tell you that he's trying to blame it on god but in actuality it is god's wrath that's going to come down on the earth in the time of jacob's trouble not the time of the church's trouble very simple great tribulation ha never has the definite article before it in the three verses in the Bible great tribulation is only a definition of this seven-year period the true name of it is called the time of Jacob's trouble Jeremiah 30 verse 7 Jacob is synonymous or the same thing with Israel so, if you are not Jacob and you are not Israel, this does not pertain to you. It was not meant for the church. It's for unbelievers. It's amazing, post-trippers, what they think. Local Minnesota Democratic Democrat ends campaign after saying ISIS isn't necessarily evil. Interesting. A Democrat's dreams of serving in the Minnesota state Minnesota State House came to an ignominious end earlier this afternoon. Dan Kimmel, who was running for the State House District 56A, announced that he was ending his campaign after he tweeted that ISIS isn't necessarily evil on Saturday, according to the Star Tribune. Minnesota Democratic Party Chair Ken Martin had called on Kimmel to apologize with the State House Minority Leader Paul Thyssen, releasing a statement of his how own calling for Kimmel to apologize and drop out of the race. And from Reuters, it says Anonymous will hunt you down, hacktivists declared total war on ISIS after Paris attacks. The hacktivist group Anonymous engaged in electronic warfare against Islamic State and has declared total war on the terror group following the deadly attacks in France while pledging to hunt down every single supporter of the jihadist group online. And Arut Sheva 7 
is reporting op-ed uh, J accuse Obama. Obama is a leftist who, who is out of sync with harsh reality. World chaos can be traced to his feckless foreign policy. Well, that'd be a nice way to put it if actually. But then the, the Jews usually do treat most nations and leaders nice. Historically, the President of the United States wears the title Leader of the Free World. Obama in his presidency has relinquished that role almost gleefully. As a result, the world is a far more dangerous place. And I think you know the rest of that. The Jerusalem Post, Islamic State, threatens attack on Washington down here. Other countries too. Cairo, Islamic State warned in a new video on Monday today that countries taking part in airstrikes against Syria would suffer the same fate as France and threaten to attack in Washington. Well, just as I just reported yesterday, they threatened the U.S. soldiers uh, way back about five months ago in their states and named all their names. But guess what? Not much of any of that happened. So don't take this too serious. There is warnings. Yes, you should take it somewhat serious. But remember, most of their, their threats just don't seem to come to fruition, especially now that they've been pounded. ISIS capital bombed heavily in retaliation for Paris. There you go. Paris is after them. I'll recall a city in Syria on the north bank of the Euphrates River about 100 miles east of Aleppo which has become the de facto capital of the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria is being pounded heavily by the French Air Force in retaliation for Friday's bombing attacks in Paris. Initial unconfirmed reports from Arab social media sources count at least 30 consecutive airstrikes. Well there you go. Vengeance from Paris. And Arut Sheva says here, Alabama, Michigan rejects Syrian migrants after a Paris attack that included terrorists who entered as refugee two U.S. states vowed to block Obama's dangerous policy. Well, praise God for that. You know, the news seems kind of on the positive side tonight. But will this stuff actually happen? Hope their vows actually come true. Two U.S. states say they will block or suspend a program to resettle Syrian migrants within their borders, citing major security concerns after Friday's wave of Islamic State terror attacks in Paris that left at least 129 murdered. Then from the Jewish press, Belgium and France declare war on ISIS. <laughs> Here we go. Mastermind is an executioner from Belgium. Hundreds of police raid Brussels building. Shots fired. Muslims running scared. <laughs> Jews again think about Aliyah. Abdel Abaud, the evil mastermind who issued orders from Syria for Friday night's massacres in Paris. Hundreds of Belgian police raided at Brussels neighborhood Monday morning in search of Islamic State terrorists and arrested the eighth man involved in the attacks, but who did not blow himself up. He was identified as Saleh, Saleh Abdeslam. And there's a picture of him. The mastermind behind the gruesome killings of at least 132 people, now it's increased too, is Abdel Abaud 26, who is in Syria. I'll let you read the rest of that. And vowing to destroy terrorism, France seeks global coalition against Islamic State. French President Francois Hollande called on the United States and Russia on Monday to join a global coalition to destroy Islamic State following the attacks across Paris and announced a wave of measures to combat terrorism in France. We're going to go through the news here quick. Netanyahu says radical Islam spurred Paris attacks. The time has come for the world to wake up. Now, got my 10-4 on that. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Sunday that it was time for the world to wake up and come together to fight terrorism, which he asserted is fueled by radical Islam. Japan releases into recession in July-September a blow to Abenomics. What is that? Japan slipped into its fourth technical recession in five years between July and September, spotlighting how the government's abenomics policies have struggled to drag the economy out of chronic stagnation. 
Then China welcomes IMF backing to make one world reserve currency. China on Saturday welcomed backing from IMF experts that the yuan should be included in its reserve currency, saying the move would strengthen the world's financial system. Doesn't sound good for the U.S. Paris attacks world leaders united against terrorism, says Cameron. And this is the second part of this news for with Cameron and Putin, world leaders have agreed to do more to share intelligence and cut off funding for terrorists, David Cameron has said. Speaking at the G20 summit in Turkey, the Prime Minister said Friday's attack in Paris underlined the threat we all face. Now, the question is, will things get better? Well, unfortunately, brothers and sisters, the Bible doesn't really predict it's going to get better before the time of Jacob's trouble. So, I don't want you to think that things are really going to get better. Maybe there will be some, some uh, sun in the dark skies that will uh, tend to appear for a little bit. But anyway, as we move on here, UN's Ban Ki-moon to visit North Korea report says, why is he visiting North Korea? North Korea faces heavy UN, EU, and U.S. sanctions for its nuclear tests. United Nations Net Secretary General Ban Ki-moon will visit North Korea this week, according to South Korean news agency Yonhap. I wonder what for. Clinton's debate performance leaves trail of fodder for political adversaries. Hmm. Former Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton and her husband, former President Bill Clinton, at the Story County Democratic Picnic in Ames, Iowa. It was not a tricky question, but Hillary Rodham Clinton found a way to make it so. Toward the end of the latest Democratic presidential debate over the weekend, she was asked about the rash of campus protests and whether she would encourage more of them. Clinton, who had plenty of stories of her work with activists, decided to go with biography. I come from the 60s, a long time ago, she told moderator John Dickerson. There was a lot of activism on campus. Republicans spotted an opportunity. A spokesman for Senator Marco Rubio demonstrated just how easily a 44-year-old Cuban-American could outflank a 68-year-old baby boomer. Debate recap tweeted Rubio spokesman Alex Conant. Clinton, I come from the 60s a long time ago. Well, I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but it sounds like Rubio won on that one. There is no radical Islam and there is also no moderate Islam. I love this. Isn't that true? Beginning more or less with 9-11, the expression radical Islam became the accepted way for the media, politicians, and public to define the religious and ideological foundations of Islam-based violence when referring to what the world calls terror. This expression was meant to be contrasted with moderate Islam, which presents Muslims as ordinary people who wish to live in peace with all of mankind, Christians, Jews. Buddhists, unbelievers, and the rest of us. The world created the image of two Islams, one radical and impossible to live with, and one moderate and just like us. This differentiation between radical and moderate Islam is what gave rise to the claim that Islam has been hijacked by the radicals, implying that the real and original Islam is the moderate, not the false radical one. This is what allows today's Europe to rel relate positively to the wave of mostly Muslim illegal immigrants washing up on its shores. They represent moderate Islam and all they want is to live in peace and harmony with their European neighbors. Well, no, that's what the Vatican wants you to think and Islam as well. G20 summit Russia-Syria action raising refugee numbers. President Putin is a key ally of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Russian military action in Syria is increasing the number of refugees trying to reach Europe. European Council President Donald Tusk has said, Not good news. Vowing to destroy terrorism, France seeks global coalition against Islamic State. 